Hi, my name is Hannah Haler and I'm a chemistry PhD student at the University of Oxford. And today I want to tell you a bit about myself and my research. So let's get started. I'm originally from Surrey and I studied A-levels in chemistry, maths and physics and AS levels in further maths and geography. And I chose chemistry as it was my best science at GCSE and maths because I enjoyed it. I chose physics because I wanted to study another science, but I hated biology and didn't want half my timetable to be maths. I decided to study chemistry at university because of my chemistry teacher at A-level. She was so enthusiastic about chemistry and made me love the subject. And I ended up studying for an integrated master's uh, in chemistry at Durham University. I decided to do a PhD during my final year at Durham uh, because I really enjoyed the research and I also felt like I wanted to learn more. So doing a PhD was the most logical next step. And I'm now a third year PhD student at the University of Oxford at New College. Now doing a PhD is very different to school because you're given much more freedom. You're carrying out research that's never been done before, which is exciting. And there's also funding about uh, to pay for your time researching. And this often pays for you to travel to conferences all over the world. So, for example, last year I was able to go to Corsica to be given a series of lectures by some of the best scientists in our field. And my research focuses on salt solutions or electrolytes. So I like to think of my research as saving the planet with seawater. So seawater is an electrolyte. But what do I mean by an electrolyte? Well, let's start off with some particles, like these atoms here. We can then change these atoms into charged particles by giving them a positive or negative charge. And when the atoms have a charge, we call them ions. And it's a really simple step to form an electrolyte from these ions. We just add them to water and ta-da, we have an electrolyte. Now, I'm particularly interested in electrolytes used in batteries. My research centres around this topic. But why am I interested in them? Firstly, because the electrolytes in batteries are very concentrated. Let's look at why this is interesting. So on the left, we have a dilute electrolyte. And on the right, we have a concentrated electrolyte. And so for the same volume of water, you can see that our concentrated electrolyte has five times as many ions in the solution. Another reason for my interest in batteries are the electrodes. Now these electrodes are made of a conducting material and they're used to make a contact with the non-metallic electrolyte. And these electrodes are not just flat surfaces, they're porous, so they're a bit like a sponge. And in this close-up image, we can see the pores as the black channels between the gray shapes. So the electrolyte fills up these pores. And we can see that the sizes of these pores varies, but generally they're very small. And to give you an idea of how small they are, this white line here corresponds to the width of a human hair. So they're tiny. Now, what I'm trying to do is work out whether the electrolyte in the bulk region, so away from the electrodes in the middle somewhere, and the electrolyte in the confined pores behave in the same or different ways. But why do we care about studying these concentrated electrolytes in tiny pores? Well, if we can understand them, we can maximise a battery's performance. And if we can do this, we can extend a battery's lifetime. Less batteries being used per year means less batteries disposed of in landfill. Now, when batteries rot in landfill, they release these harmful chemicals into the ground, which can leak into the soil and end up in water systems, causing both soil and water pollution. And this contamination can harm animals, humans and the environment. So less batteries in landfill equals less environmental pollution. So we can effectively save the planet by carrying out battery research. So I spend my days in the lab effectively squishing liquids down to see how they behave. I use a piece of equipment called a surface force balance to do this. And before I show you a simplified diagram of this equipment, 
I'm going to use food to demonstrate what the equipment does. So here we have a s'more. We've got two biscuits, some chocolate and a marshmallow. Now, if you squeeze the biscuits together, what happens? Well, you make a mess, but the filling spills out of the side. But there's still some marshmallow and chocolate in the middle, just a thinner layer of it. And that's what the equipment I use is doing. So instead of biscuits, I squish the liquid with glass lenses. And my liquid is now some electrolyte, like sodium chloride in water. The electrolyte can squeeze out the sides like the marshmallow and the chocolate can, but we still have some electrolyte in between the lenses. And when we squeeze the electrolyte a lot, our free ions, our charged particles, can push up against each other like in these images. And here, the surfaces are negatively charged. So the positively charged particles, positive ions, are closest to the surface. And by finding out how the concentrated electrolyte behaves in a confined space will inform our understanding of batteries, and this should lead to reducing our demands on the planet's resources. Thank you all for listening, and to find out more about the work of other women in chemistry, please follow the link on screen.